In our lesson for today, we'll be multiplying whole numbers that consist of one digit all the way up to three digits. We will also learn when we see a number with an exponent of two, meaning to multiply the number by itself. Five times five is 25. If I asked you to add five four times, you probably would say, that's just five times four, which is 20 because repeated addition is multiplication. When you multiply two numbers, the result is called the product. The numbers being multiplied are called the factors. Eight times six is 48. Eight and six are factors of 48. 48 is called the product of eight and six. Seven times four is 28. Seven and four are factors of 28. And 28 is the product of seven and four. What are the easy numbers to multiply? A lot of people would say zero, one, two, five, and 10. And some people may not say nine. If you do not know the hand trick or the finger trick for multiplying your nine timetables, you should leave this video and watch the video in the description. You really only have to know up to your 10 timetables. So what numbers are left? Well, that's three, four, six, seven, and eight. So let's take a closer look at this. We stated that the tens were easy. We also said the ones are easy. The twos are easy and the fives are easy. If you watch the video or you know the finger trip from your nine timetables, we'll also be able to eliminate the nine timetable, leaving us with these four pockets of products. If we look at the purple products, we can see that the products are the same. When we look at this 18 and this 18, we're getting the same thing, just reversing the factors. 6 times 3, which is 18, and 3 times 6. Therefore, the factors are just reversed. Also, if we draw this line down diagonally, we can see that this is a 12 and this is a 12. Again, the factors are reversed, four times three versus three times four. In this case, this 48 would be eight times six versus this 48, which is just six times eight. Again, just reversing the factors, leaving us 10 factors to remember. Eight times six, which is 48, seven times three, which is 21, seven times four, which is 28, four times three, which is 12, 7 times 6, which is 42, 6 times 4, which is 24, 8 times 7, which is 56, 8 times 3, which is 24, 6 times 3, which is 18, and 8 times 4, which is 32. Let's now multiply multi-digits. In the first one, we have a two-digit number multiplied by a one-digit number. We're going to start with 8 times 2, which is 16. We're going to go 8 times 4, which is 32, we'll add the 1 since we carried it over, and that's going to leave us with 33. Now, when we have two digits by two digits, we're going to have to multiply 36 by 8 as well as 36 by 4, but we have to remember the 4 is in the tens place. 8 times 6 is 48. Let's carry the 4. 8 times 3 is 24 plus the 4, which gives us 28. Now we move on to the tens place. So we're going to use zero as a placeholder and go four times six, which is 24. We'll cross out the four. And now we're going to place a two on top instead. Four times three is 12. And now we'll add the two, which gives us 14. Everything is nicely lined up. So we can add eight plus zero is eight. Eight plus four is 12. Carry the one. 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 4 is 7, and let's bring down the 1. And then we'll add the comma. Our answer is 1,728. In the first one, we had just one line, and we didn't have to add anything. And the second one, since we're multiplying it by two digits, we had two lines. In this case, since 267 is three digits, we'll end up with three lines. Let's start with the ones digit. 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 4 is 28 plus three is 31, seven times three is 21, plus three is 24. Now we're moving on to the tens place, so we'll just use zero as a placeholder. 
And a great thing sometimes is just to cross these out so you don't get confused. Six times five is 30, carry the three. Six times four is 24, plus three is 27. Six times three is 18, plus two is 20. We're moving on to the hundreds place. So we can cross those numbers on top out. And now instead of bringing down one zero, bring down two zeros. Two times five is 10, we'll carry the one. Two times four is eight, plus one is nine. Two times three is six. Now all we have to do is add. Five plus zero plus zero is five. One plus zero plus zero is one. Four plus seven is 11. One plus two is three, and three plus nine is 12, but I like to go one plus nine is 10, 10 plus two is 12. Either way, you're still getting 12. One plus two is three, and three plus six is nine. We're going to rewrite this as 92,115, placing the comma after the third digit going to my left. So every three digits going to your left, you need to use commas. If this pattern continues, how many squares will be in the next video? Pause and see if you can answer this. One way of seeing the pattern is to add three. One plus three is four, and then four plus five is nine, and then nine plus seven is 16. What would I add to 16 to get the next one? If you notice that we're going up by odd numbers, and the next odd number we're going up by would be nine. And 16 plus 9 is 25. Is there any other way of thinking about this problem? Pause and see if you can figure out another way to get the answer. Here's another way. 1 times 1, 1 square. 2 times 2, 4 squares. 3 times 3, 9 squares. 4 times 4, 16 squares. Therefore, the next one will most likely just be... 5 times 5, giving us 25 squares. What shape are the numbers arranged in? And yes, in squares. So this is why we read this as 1 squared, when we see that power, that exponent of 2. When we see this one, we would read this as 2 squared. We squared the 2. We would read this one as three squared, and this next one would be four squared. You won't always have this picture, so let's take a look at one. When we see five squared, this would mean five times five, which is 25. On the next one, this is read as seven squared. And what does that mean again? Yes, seven times seven, which is 49. Let's do a quick review. The numbers 1, 4, 9, 16, and so on are actually called perfect squares. Why? Because we can arrange these numbers into perfect squares. I hope you enjoyed the lesson, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.